Francisco from Hong Kong. In Hong Kong for the last generation, I'm making more choice. Com, the Republican candidate I did for not governor. have sexual relations. I realize that this is something that we're going to be able to solve our problems if we get distracted by sideshows and carnival barbers. One Republican, one Democrat, and you discuss the issues that matter in today's local, state, national, and global politics. Hosted by Steve Hickson with co-hosts John Stanberry and Franklin Chancey. This is Backfire. Hey, good morning, Cleveland, Tennessee. Welcome to another edition of Backfire. Where's the beef? With Steve Hickson, John Stanberry, and Franklin Chancey. It's been so long you forgot who we are. Oh, and our chief engineer, Daniel Bradley. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, everyone. Well, I'm back from a nice little vacation, and uh, I'm all refreshed now and don't know anything about anything that's going on around Cleveland, so anything you guys want to talk about locally? Well, they've authorized 436 liquor stores. <laughs> what is going on with the liquor stores? Uh, they keep changing the, the format, don't they? Well, apparently there's no limit at this time as long as you meet the... The, uh, the restrictions on it, mm -hmm. uh, but if but if uh, if enough of them fail, then some restrictions go into place. I guess that's the best way to put it. Well, we talked about it last week. But this is cover for a poor decision on the front end. Uh, I think several people warned them that they had no criteria for rejecting anybody. So if they rejected somebody, they were automatically going to be accused of favoritism. Right. So their answer was fine. We won't reject anybody. You just let everybody come. So everybody's got a thousand dollars can sign up, right? Right, and supposedly, if if competition weeds that down to five, then they will put in effect that five is the limit. But here's the point: if there was a reason to have five to begin with, and, and if certainly if it was a public safety or the the you know the economic makeup of our city, then why would you reject that? Why would you drop those concerns and let it be open ended? You know, this seems like a simple process. How could we screw it up so bad? It's government. Huh? It's government. The government? That's how government works. Why do you think they wanted to put a size? Why would they need a square footage size of a building? Well, obviously, for the concerns that I threw out before we voted on this, there are demographic and, and cultural damages that come with this. And so they were trying to mitigate that. Well, we'll make sure it's a really expensive liquor store. <laughs> and that's all that was. So, I guess we're... Uh, we're but my, my point is, though, these conversations should have been, been had open and in the, in the public view before the public voted on this. There was absolutely no information whatsoever before the public voted. Now, personally, you know, y'all know I voted against it. I think it probably would have passed anyway. But just as as doing the right thing, our our city government should have had a open and honest discussion about the concerns that come with liquor stores, and they didn't. Well, anyway, now what is the deal? Is it three thousand square feet still? I don't think they changed any of that. That's a big store, you know, three thousand square feet. 3, square feet. That, none of those were changed. I think the the, the that's a big store. I mean, that's the, a huge the store. Stucco facade is still part of it. The parking areas are still part of it. All those things. So that's going to have a natural limit, I think. Well, it's going to limit the amount of uh, buildings they're going to be able to find. I mean, to find three thousand square feet in an area that's available. And, and it's got to be standalone. That's a, that sounds like something the government would definitely put out, like a Social Security. I know I was trying to bid on the Social Security here at the village one time, and we got ready to submit our bid, and then we realized we were going to put it behind the Chamber of Commerce, 9,000 square feet, and then we realized at the last minute it had to make earthquake regulations from California. So that's why we had to build a new building just for them. I mean, it's... It, it, it was amazing. But but that's, to be honest, I know 3,000 square feet sounds like a lot. Yeah. That's 30 feet by 100 feet. You know? Well, I tell you something, when you're leasing property at, at, oh, know, at $15, know. $18 a square foot, that's, uh, that, that's quite a bit. I know, but think about this. You've been in plenty of liquor stores, I would assume. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 feet wide is not real wide. 
So if you're going to display all of the different liquors at any kind of volume, and then you're going to have any kind of storage in the back, 30 feet by 100 feet is not, not a whole lot. Well, why does it have to be 30 feet? Well, that's just... It, it, yeah, I just did quick math. Okay. It, it could be 40 feet by or 85. <laughs> okay. Whatever comes up to 3,000 feet. It doesn't have to be that deep. <laughs> no, it, you know, we'll do a little math here. I, I'll try and figure out all the different widths and lengths that reach If I'm the liquor store, I'd want it wider, not deeper. Okay. So I, let's say 50 feet. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, at... Uh, some point in time, there's going to be some liquor stores put in Cleveland, but we're not sure how many of huh? them. I, I think. You know why could why couldn't they just go and get the rules and regulations from another community? Well, that's what they did. Sure they, did. did. they did. In fact, they in fact they modeled with some adjustments, but they modeled their ordinance on the one they use in Athens, the city of Athens. And and I said this last week. Etowah got two liquor stores open, and one of them's already closed. Yeah. So they probably will weed this down, but my point is all of this should have taken place in the public eye before we voted for this. And this move to open it up completely is about nothing but protecting their butts from having to make a decision that they will be accused of favoritism over. <laughs> when is the deadline on this? When is, it, when is it all supposed to happen? Do you remember? Something like that. I mean, they had something like 16 or 18 people pick up applications, but they haven't all been turned in or anything. <clears throat> but you you would hope that anybody that picked up an application had at least looked over the requirements. Not necessarily. That. Well, that's $10,000 they're putting up. Is that non-refundable? Non-refundable. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm yeah. glad that. I wish they'd just done it $5,000, and that way they'd, they would have really limited it. Hmm. <laughs> well. That was, they could have put $5,000 in any size you want. Uh, anyway, like I said, I've been going. Anything else locally you want to talk about? I'm looking here in the uh, Chattanooga Times this morning. It's interesting, the brownfield development. You know, <clears throat> Chattanooga, the south side is just booming down there. And uh, uh, it looks like Gardenshire, uh, Senator Todd Gardenshire, is, uh, he would like to end a brown build tax incentive program for new economic development projects in Hamilton County and uh, Tennessee's three other largest counties and it's triggering a pretty big alarm and uh, what's going on he says is that these developers are using this government money to go into areas and do redevelopment but it's supposed to be for brownfield areas mm -hmm. and that they're not going in he's talking about in Chattanooga there is uh, 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 some large areas with brownfields that there, nobody's even looking at for development, which should be developed, and that uh, he wants to put a stop to what they're doing down there until. Uh, so you're saying he's saying they're using the the tax incentives in the wrong places. I think that's the way I read this article. If you have wealthy investors are setting on a benefit that was designed to spur economic development and and growth during a recession. Well, actually, this this sort of ties into the Amazon deal up in New York and, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And this is kind of where you see the left... <laughs> now, listen to me, frankly. This is, is going to be a stress. Just listen to me. No, it's not. He's complaining about corporate welfare. He's, right. he's saying that these sites are sitting there. Nobody wants to do it. They're going to take government money. That's the same complaint that she made about Amazon. And, and frankly, in New York, Amazon critics were on the right and the left. Now, the difference is he's actually talking about real taxpayer dollars going into it. Ms. Cortez is not economically literate enough to understand that the $300 billion in tax credits doesn't actually exist until Amazon comes and generates tax revenue. Yeah. She thinks that the government gave them $300 billion because she's ignorant, but they actually didn't. In this case, Senator Gardenhire is talking about actual taxpayer dollars being given to corporations. So that's the tie-in, Frank. Franklin. There are there are critics of, of this kind of program on the right and left. Uh, okay. Well, you know, Garden Charters on top of something. If they're doing the, all the development, I mean, it's amazing the development that's going on. Well, I, I think his question is whether or not 
the process is being abused. Right. And not the money not going to the areas where it really should be targeted. Yeah, he even named some areas. I don't have it here, but named some areas that should have been targeted that uh, uh, that haven't been. And uh, I was trying to see that was the U.S. Pipe Foundry site located in Chattanooga Southside area off of Interstate 24 near downtown. That was one of the, the sites he was talking about. And, you know, that is a site that's kind of ugly as you ride in out of Chattanooga. It's sitting there just empty. And there's a lot of land there. So well, that, that's an area that's being looked at for the construction of a new baseball stadium down there. And uh, Greenway, uh, uh, Chattanooga River Walk extension out there. A new baseball stadium. In they, want, they, want to, um, they want to open up. Hawk Hill, where the current one is, for some development projects there, and so, but they're talking about doing a private stadium down there, not a public one. You know, the one, the one that uh, you know, with Lookouts play w was significantly paid for by private interest, right? And now, so it wasn't all a public. So now they're wanting to develop it and build another ballpark somewhere else. Yeah, down there, and use that as part of the development of that area that you're talking about around U.S. Pipe down there. Yeah. So that, and that would also improve, in their theory, the appearance of the city as you come in around uh, 27. Yeah, it, it would, but uh, they better get to moving on. Well, you know what, would, here's the thing. you got two ways to approach these things. The way they're approaching it is, let's see if we can take taxpayer dollars and entice someone to do this. The other way w would be to let's get rid of the damn EPA with all their ridiculous rules about cleaning up a site. You know, there's a site in Missouri that we've been incinerating the dirt at for years. A site in France which is ten times more polluted with exactly the same contaminant, put a foot of dirt over it, built a public park on top of it, and they've had absolutely no increase in cancers or anything. So the regulations, ridiculous regulations, are one of the reasons these sites aren't in, in attractive to redevelopment. So uh, the government creates a problem and then spends taxpayer dollars trying to fix it. Well, that's why these politicians all love their jobs. Pretty much. Well, it seems to me that, uh, for the most part, Chattanooga's approach to redevelopment seems to have been spectacularly uh, this, successful. This, this, isn't about, this isn't about Chattanooga. You're right. Okay, well, that's what we're talking government. about. But my point is the federal government regulations are the regulations that make this site so expensive to redevelop. And then we take taxpayer dollars to overcome ridiculous requirements that the government imposed. And, and you're right, Chattanooga City government and Hamilton County government are at the, the mercy of the state and the federal EPAs and, and the crazies. <laughs> I doubt you get that much criticism of the EPA in Chattanooga given what's happened to their environment over the years compared to when we were young. The vast majority of Chattanooga's problems is because it sits in a, in a bowl geographically and all the outside contaminants are sucked into it. That's why the smog was so bad. It has nothing to do with Chattanooga producing a lot. It has to do with the way the actual well, land is. <laughs> what, what that, what they happened? produce a lot less of it now. That's why it's not as bad now. It, it is uh, less now, John. I do remember uh, how bad it was when I was young. It was. It looked Come like on, it was cloud. actually on the national news as the dirtiest city yeah, in America. It looked like a cloud hanging over Chattanooga. I'm not saying it's not, but I don't think the government is is the the reason that happened. The, you think. The Clean Air Act and environmental regulations had nothing to do with the smog going away. In Some of them are fine. The point is government never knows when to quit because government is invested in growing the size of government. So, yes, some regulation was good, but we have taken it, like I said, we've got Superfund sites that we're spending billions of dollars on that other countries handle completely differently with no adverse health effects. But but we've got a government bureaucracy to grow. Well, most of the time, these environmental companies have been formed, formulated, and they get into a routine of just billing the government, and the government just pays them on a monthly but, basis he, for nothing. Here's the for thing: for monitoring, about. and a monitor might be put somewhere and just left, and this agency 
as long as they're monitoring it, getting money paid. from the government, and there's no cutoff. They will not cut it off unless somebody just forces them to. Here's the thing. Capitalism works. And so if, if the city, and you could have had things spurring it on in the 70s, you could have the government, you know, saying, you know, talking about it, having committees about it. Eventually, a company will say, there's an economic benefit for us to be the clean company. We can sell more of our product if people think we're trying to help. And so then another company will go, well, you know what? I can figure out a service to help you do that. I can figure out how to make your smokestacks cleaner. That's how market-based economies work, and it would have worked that way, and it did work that way, but the government has to have their finger in the pie. Unless you happen to be in Love Canal or any of the other places where they you know, bur buried all their time. Yeah, well, the, you over say, John. the overwhelming uh, situation in this country is incredibly clean and, and pristine, and yes, there are some... By the way, one of the worst ones right now is where the EPA allowed that flooded... Uh, contaminated water to flood. We didn't hear a lot about that, frankly. And it hadn't been cleaned up yet either. Which one are you referring to? Out in New Mexico or, you know, it, it's a, a contaminated river. They allowed the entire river to be flooded and contaminated. The EPA actually did that. And amazingly, the national media barely covered it. I, I, I think very few people would actually adopt John's approach. Well, I think over the EPA uh, overextends itself constantly in that they need to have some restrictions on when, how long they can monitor things, and they get into this the program. They like get that. into a program where they can get a monthly fee from the federal government, and they never want to cut, cut it off. That's their monthly fee. That that's how they strive, uh, thrive. Uh, Trump wants California to pay back millions, billions for the bullet train. What's your opinion? What should happen there? Well, that's just a, a, keep in mind, that's a key component to the Democrats' Green New Deal, to do that same project across the entire country. Now, even liberal, crazy California, with their new liberal governor, looked at it and said, it's a multi-billion dollar boondoggle in a small, limited location. But that's the Democrat Party's standard for the rest of the country. I mean, this, they've been working on that thing for since, what, 2008 was when it was voted to, to do this. By the way, just to clear up, the EPA released 3 million gallons of contaminated water into the river. That's the EPA. <laughs> what, what do you think about the uh, bullet train? Franklin, in, uh, in all honesty, you know, it... Uh, uh, the Trump administration said Tuesday it plans to cancel $929 million awarded to California's high-speed rail project and wants the state to return an additional $2.5 billion that is already spent. Said the U.S. Department of Transportation follows through on President Donald Trump's threats to claw back $3.5 billion that the federal government gave to California to build a bullet train. Uh, they were supposed to have, ma it's supposed to be matching grant money Mm -hmm. And they haven't even matched the grants on it. Mm -hmm. So he wants the money back now. They can't complete the project. Mm -hmm. That mayor out there now wants to change the project from a bullet train to a slow train. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, let, let's let's talk about the big issue and the small issue. Okay. The, the, the small issue is California needs to do what they said they were going to do for the money, period. Yeah. Now, what happened? Now, what happened in reality is they had a bunch of cost overruns, and the project went up in cost to the point that it doesn't seem like it's feasible to them at this right, point. So now, hold on, let me finish. Okay. okay. So that's the small issue, uh, and so I don't have a problem with holding California accountable for that. The bigger issue is. Is there a, a future for high-speed rail between cities in, in America? I think there are lots of places where there probably is. We already have lots of rail all through the Northeast in particular. Improving the quality of that would be helpful for everybody. 
You know, John John tried to tell everybody last week that this new Green New Deal thing involved there not being any more air travel. Well, that turned out to be totally she said false. That it was no, in, it it, yes, it was. It was in her free. No, it, it was in her frequently asked questions sheet that she pulled down off what of her website. What it said was that she wanted, because of rail, that most of these flights not be necessary. And what she was talking about is it not be necessary that you have to fly from Chattanooga to Atlanta or Chattanooga it said to Australia. In two years, they would do away with most air travel. Yeah, but it didn't say do away. It said not down. necessary. She took it down, Franklin. Actually, she did. She said we can't fully. In her personal. Let me say the actual yeah. words. She said we will not be able to fully do away with all air travel in ten years. Now, what does the word fully mean to you, she didn't Franklin? Say do away. With that is not what she says. She's a lunatic, and your party is a lunatic. If you go, your own speaker of the house actually derided it when asked about it. She said, "Oh well, I don't know what they call it. What that green uh, dream?" Yeah. Nancy Pelosi actually acted like she didn't know what it was. And by the way, let me clear up what Franklin just did. If you heard him, he said, "Well, there were some cost overruns." <laughs> so it started out to cost, I think, four or five billion dollars. It has now ballooned to seventy-seven billion dollars, and it's not finished. And Franklin, if you're saying there are parts of the country that can do it, so you've got a corridor out in California, the most populated state in the country, and the corridor is the most populated section of California, and they can't in a in a terrain that is habitable climate all year round. You can't build it there. It's not feasible there. It's not feasible anywhere. It's also the bullet train. It's also, yes. it's also the most expensive land in the country. Well, also, the reason it doesn't make any sense, John, is because uh, the cost of fuel has to go up quite a bit before they can uh, rationalize. Well, they take care of that because when they do away with all combustion engines in 10 years, which the Green New Deal called for, then you'll be paying you know, your housing bills will go up tenfold. The cost. And by the way, Franklin, you all are supposed to be the party of the poor. If you increase the cost of heating and cooling a home, let's say you only increase it threefold or fourfold. Who does that hurt the most? The wealthy or the poor? Who said they were for increasing the? Cost Franklin, we need to do home. away with all fossil fuels to generate energy, and you're not supporting. Uh, nuclear, which that's actually the key to show that they're not serious about this. Because if they were truly serious about this, they would be supporting nuclear, which is completely clean. But they're not supporting that either. So, Franklin, when you're getting all your energy, which, by the way, is actually impossible to get all of our energy from wind and solar, and I guess we'll put in some of those lap generators out in the ocean, you can't do it. But if you could do it, the cost of your home energy will skyrocket. And that damages the poor people the most. That was one of the reasons they they were using on this on this bullet train, is that <clears throat> for the price of a ticket, no one would pay to ride it. So therefore, why build it? Or to make money. The real <clears throat> the real problem were the cost overruns. <clears throat> well, the cost overruns. And they were supposed to be able to attract. Um, the cost of more private investment in it. In 2000, did not happen. Why, that, why is that, Franklin? I don't know the answer. Are, are any private investment, aren't they those greedy people that want to make money? Yeah. Well, what does that tell you? It doesn't make any money. That's but why. listen, it won't be a problem. Because under the Green New Deal, they'll just make you do it. That's the way the, the, the liberals work. We'll just make you By do it. By all means, want. John, let's just go back to 1965. Yeah, Franklin, that's the problem. No, no, you it, it's not true. Your own party no, going no, off you, the cliff. No, you, you can't, be you can't because concept. you can't acknowledge facts. The facts are, John, the only reason our cars got cleaner is because the government made them do it. It wasn't it wasn't beneficial to the company's bottom line to do that. They got made wait, to do wait, it. Wait, wait. And we all appreciate how that much, now. How much does a car cost now? Adjusted for inflation, not a whole lot more than it did then. Now, wait a minute. That's not true. That's, that's, not, true. that's, that's not true, true at all. That's not, that's true. not true at all. It the cost true. of building a car, the cost of all the regulations and all the standards mm -hmm. has gotten so much higher. It's a matter of reasonableness, Franklin. And that's the problem with talking to you about this. Instead of just going, okay, you're right, government tends to overreach. You go to this, oh, my God, if we don't do this, we're going to go back to the and your time. approach is government can't do anything right. 
John Franklin, my, and all around you Franklin, is evidence that that's crap. My crowd. approach is safer because if you underdo it, you can always come back and increase it. Once government takes control of something, you'll never get it back from them, ever. And the truth is, without the government involvement, none of this would have ever happened, period. Without the government involvement, That's right. none of what would have ever happened. All the environmental improvement in Walmart Cleveland has State. paid over minimum wage for decades now without any, you know, so Franklin, why would, if the government is the only reason these things happen, why would a company like Walmart have paid over the minimum wage for decades? Because they use that and their lobbying ability to keep the government from oh, raising it's all prices. about protecting our, I see. So you won't say because they know the public will appreciate it and will increase their brand loyalty. No, it can't be that because obviously you don't actually believe in capitalism. I by the way, capitalism. I just don't believe in sticking the head. By the way, here's the best part about it. a generous place we're putting. We're going to give Franklin and all his people a chance to show us because we're going to vote on the Green New Deal. And what's amazing about that is all these people that are supporting it are now freaking out oh, about yeah. the Senate yeah, voting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, John. I'm looking forward to that. Because let me ask you the question, John. Because here's what's been proposed. The proposal is that it be called up under regular order and people will be able to submit amendments to it. You know, democracy. You remember that? Who, who, who Do you put remember it out? that? Did Mitch McConnell put it out or did your people put it out? Uh -huh. Yeah, the Democrats did. Well, sure. then why would you complain about voting on it? If the world's going to end because in 12 years, by the way, keep, believes in a competition of ideas, Alexander John. Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, your, your great author of the Green New Deal, says the world's going to end in 12 years. <laughs> Does that label, would, would you label As her I crazy said, John, on that? Put it out there and let people Frank, legislate on it. Is the world going to end in 12 years? Answer my question, John. World, I'm, I'm well, I don't know, John. Do you know if the world's going to end in 12 years, or yes, is it going to end tomorrow? Do. Do actually, you know I that? do know. Actually, How do you I do know, know that, John? It's not going to end, Franklin. How do you know I'll that? I'll go on the record. It's not going to okay. end. Franklin, okay. your party has gone over the crazy cliff. Here's what I think, John. I think your party ought to have the courage to show up in Congress and allow us to debate ideas and do actual legislation. Oh, you mean like That's global what warming you know. debate? Like global warming yes, debate? Yes. The debate that show you all up. say is closed? Show up and the let people you say you're a denier show up and that you try to run them out of their own jobs? I'm electing some congressmen who will actually will show up and vote on things, John, instead of <laughs> sitting back here and taking pot shots while you okay. do nothing. You mean like Barack your party Obama has voted done present, nothing for 10 years. Years. Times. Absolutely nothing. Because there's not anything to do right now on global warming. Matter of fact, do you know what the polar hey, vortex is? Yeah, and convince the people Can that you listen right. for a second? Do you, know what, believe do you know what a polar vortex is? Yes. John. What is it, Franklin? Well, it's an air current mm -hmm. that circulates around the northern part uh, of the yeah. planet, which because of um, some warming. other environmental issues got split this year, okay. causing it to come farther lower than it ordinarily is. Let me, he's right in the current time. Here's what it used to be called. It used to be called the Alberta Clipper. Mm -hmm. But John, Dr. John Holden, who was President Obama's uh, science advisor, invented the term polar vortex. Because that's the way you scare the population. You invent a new term. Now, this is the same doctor who proposed compulsory abortions and mass sterilizations because population was going out of control. He actually said, now this is his writing, compulsory abortion could be sustained under the existing constitution if the population crisis became sufficiently severe to endanger the society. So if you think about what he's saying is, he's the one that will determine whether it's sufficiently severe, therefore the Constitution will allow him to force abortions on our people. That's the guy that came up with the term polar vortex. By the way, we're actually in a cooling trend right now. The, since 1998, global temperature has dropped 0.56 degrees Celsius. We dropped between 16, 2016 and 2018, and we dropped more in 2000, from 17 to 18. Now, this think about that. 0. 0.56 degrees we've dropped. They've claimed that a 0.6% warming over the last 120 years was proof of catastrophic human-caused warming. So we've had, in the last 20 years, We've had almost the same drop that they're claiming is catastrophic increase over the last 120 years. First of all, that is utter nonsense. Everything John just said is totally false. What makes you the official? I 
don't know. Every major organization in the in the world. Once again, he doesn't want to have debate. He no, just said he wants debate. No, you're not. I, can't, I thought I can't Did I bring in a NASA stuff. study last week? I gave yeah, you a NASA this study. This is NASA that I'm looking at right, right now. You know what, NASA. Lisa? I actually said that. There are competing studies in NASA. There's no competing study that says temperatures have been falling for the last 20 years. You're wrong, Franklin. No, there's not, John. There is not. And no, you until you decide to get into the real world, we can't have a discussion. Franklin, that's the point. There is no settled science. And science is never settled. But your people won't allow a debate. There are people in NASA that have done studies that came out just last month that said we are actually in a cooling trend. And they're expecting another little ice age. Now, you're right. There are competing science in NASA that say we think we're in a warming trend over a broader period of time. The point here is, frankly... Over a broader period of time, John... The, the, the data shows that four of the top ten warmest years in history have happened in the last ten years. How, That's not a cooling How far trend. back does history go, Franklin? Well, we don't have data You're right, from 1600 we don't. because Franklin, we didn't have the ability to do it. Why is Greenland called Greenland? I've asked you this before. Why is Greenland called Greenland? It's a frozen wasteland. Why is it called Greenland? Well, the actual reason is because they used it to dissuade people from coming there. That's actually not true. That's here the truth. Probably, I, I, I'll have to, I, I'm going to have to estimate when the Vikings were traveling the world, but there was a Viking settlement there. They were there for about two or three hundred years. And the writings that we found on that settlement was, it was a lush, green utopia. They grew all the food they needed. They had a wonderful settlement there. And then, the like I'm talking about, the Little Ice Age came through, and it became a frozen wasteland. We are actually uncovering now, as these um, icebergs are melting in the, in the poles, we're actually uncovering land and finding that it was ha inhabitable previous to this. So the Earth goes through these cycles. The point here is they want to use natural cycles to open up basically global government and global control. Everything on the left is always about control. Gun control is not about John, guns. John, it's about control. John shows up in here periodically and he'll say, oh, well, the uh, ice pack in South America is increasing. No, it's not. Actually, it did, Franklin. Then he'll, say, then he'll say the ice pack in the north is increasing. Right. No, I never he said that. Instead, never it's said all that. shrinking. You see, you don't listen. I never said that. The north is shrinking. The south is growing. No, it's not. You're wrong, Franklin. I brought you the data in. Oh, God. What about all these other countries that uh, are in this world? Are they doing their fair share? No, stuff? we are no, the best not, country. But somebody's got to be the leader. We are the leader. We pulled out of this climate let me, agreement. Let, and let, we're let, me tell, let me tell you how really silly this debate is. Every major corporation in America and the world believes that global warming is a reality. Every one of them, sure. without any question. Right? Yeah, they're planning for it too. All of them. But John says, oh, but there's a debate. But all these capitalists that he's so in love with, he thinks they're all crazy because they're accepting no, it. They're why are they accepting I'll tell you it, exactly, Fine, I'll tell you why. Because the population has been sold the idea and they're simply reacting to the market. Wait a minute. Is anybody making any money off this, Franklin? Huh? Is anybody making any money off this? Sure, there are opportunities, opportunities for people to make money. All right, so 2015, October 30, NASA study: mass gains of Antarctic ice sheets greater than losses. That's a NASA study from three years ago, Franklin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, is it or is it not? <laughs> John, mass gains of ice are greater than losses. By the way, Franklin. The World Wildlife Fund uses the polar bear as their symbol, and we watch the pitiful Sarah McLaughlin singing commercials every damn day on the poor polar bears. What are the polar bear numbers today? I do not know the They're answer. They're at 40-year highs. By the way, polar bears in Russia just last week ate a bunch of people. I, what I do know is that polar bears are entering a whole lot of towns up in Canada and Alaska right now because their traditional places have melted. That's a true story. That's called that's called That's life. called global warming, John. Franklin, if you looked at America two hundred years ago, were people moving into areas they weren't previously in? This is not them moving into that place. I think I think that maybe people are feeding the bears. What do you think, Brent? <laughs> well they fed them in Russia because they ate a bunch of people. <laughs> Let's take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson. We'll be right back after this. It's a long way up. Hello. I'm the 
Dogtown. And you're listening to WOOPLP, Cleveland, Tennessee. Whoop FM is a broadcasting service of the Traditional Music Resource Center, and we play America's original music. Yeah, you looking for something sweet? I know you are. Bring your little sweet self to the village bake shop. Around since 1961, there ain't a baked good in the galaxy. The village bake shop can't wait for you. Bake shop. So when your breath can treat your mouth to a taste it won't soon forget, get over to the village, village bake, bake shop, shop in the village green town center. Or give them a call at 476 5179. You dig? Attention, Cleveland area creditors. Are you tired of dealing with debtors that owe you money? I'm Jeff Rentro, and I've owned and operated Financial Recovery, a debt recovery specialist here in my hometown of Cleveland for 18 years. We're a licensed and bonded Tennessee collection agency working for a wide variety of creditors from commercial, manufacturing, physicians, dentists, attorneys, small business owners, to individuals. Look, any kind of business dealing with billing, charge accounts, or even return checks. I know your past due accounts are not a top priority for you, but they would be to me. Let me try to make it easy for you to make a change in the way you've been handling your accounts. There's no contract and no cost to you in most cases as our fee of only 30% can be added to the balance owed to you. So, whether you have hundreds of accounts monthly and need help with your billing and collection or you're just an individual and somebody owes you money, let me help you. Give me a call at 400-5376 and I'll come by and see you. That's 400-5376. Financial Recovery, a licensed and bonded collection agent. In Cleveland, Tennessee, four zero zero five three seven six. Hey, Wilsters, you got the blues, the winter blues? Well, let Economy Rental help you. That's right, it's tax refund season. Go buy Economy Rentals for your appliances, furniture, TVs, electronics, and more. And during this tax refund season, you can take it home today, pay it off in 90 days with your income tax return. That's right, Cleveland's first rent-to-own business, locally owned and operated for 35 years. 901 Sahara Drive, 472-6105. Hey, you can still rent a TV, a 55 or a 65 inch, at a recliner for only $5 a week. And of course, they always have that washer and dryer combo, only $19.95 a week or two rooms of furniture for only $39.95 a week lord 90 days same as cash free delivery and setup i tell you what go see stacy pote and the gang and check out all their tax refund season specials i'm going myself economy rentals we make it easy to own don't get the blues come on down and see what the tax refund season can do for you visit them at 901 sahara drive or call 472-6105 or economyrentals.net why would you put up with a heating and cooling system that cycles on and off when you can have quiet true comfort variable speed by train it runs at low speeds with continuous little adjustments to keep your home comfortable and quiet. It's always been hard to stop a train. Now, it's hard to hear one. When you want an unconventionally efficient heating and air unit that keeps your home right in the comfort zone, day in and day out, nothing will do but a train. To get the best train service, call your local train comfort specialist. Mechanical Systems, 336-5739. Keeping you comfortable is Mechanical Systems' only business, and they've been providing high-quality service and installation for more than 30 years. Mechanical Systems, 336-5739. That's 336-5739. It's hard to stop a train. Another SOS, and you're stressing, and that's the time to check in. I check in to cash, check in. When you have a cash emergency, check in. We understand the urgency of checking to get your loans and more. You gotta check in with your check in to cash shop. Walk in, call in, click in, go all in. Check in to cash in at check in to cash. You want stuff, money shop. Check, check, check in to cash. You're listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson on Woo FM. Call 423-614. 5553 to join in on the conversation. Now, back to Backfire. Hey, 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 I've been told we're back. We're live. We're live. All right, let me ask you a question, Franklin. This is getting to be a, kind of out of control, but at what age group should abortions be allowed to happen? 
what age you grew? Yeah, should they go? Should they be able to go up to nine months before an abortion happens? Rarely. All right, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because Franklin told me I was wrong last week. Okay. I don't like to give out bad information, so I did a little research on this. Uh, you said, and, and, and Franklin, they always say this, that uh, first off, there, people are told that third trimester abortions are illegal. They are not. Under federal law, uh, they're completely not. That le- what, what legal. That third trimester abortions are legal under federal law. Some states restrict it, but they're completely legal uh, under federal law up to the ninth it, month. It, every state has restrictions now, on third trimester. But what he said, and what they always say, is that they are extremely rare. All right. In 2015, the CDC reported that 1.3 percent of abortions were committed after at 21 weeks or later. 1.3. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but that comes out to 8,300 children aborted in the in the late trimester abortions. I'm saying, oh, I'm going to get that because I, I, I knew that's what you said. Now this is a Planned Parenthood study, so this is not a biased study. 30 percent of the women having late term abortions have had at least one previous late term abortion. Thirty percent are having multiple late-term abortions. That, now, that doesn't address whether I'm going to get to that. The third myth is that these, like Franklin said, they're only performed for reasons of life. All right. So, the 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 Doe ruling is not the important ruling here. There, I'm sorry. The Doe, Doe versus Bolton was the secondary ruling that actually defined what health meant, and it said that it could mean anything that the mother and the abortionist decided. So that opened up the health and well-being. So an abortionist can decide what well-being is. Late late-term abortionist George Tiller said that he he signed off on abortions for mental health reasons, such as, now this is his own sign-offs, not being able to find a babysitter, desiring to attend prom or a rock concert. He signed off on late-term abortions for those mental health reasons. Where was this? This is George Tiller. Where? He's out, I think he was in uh, South Dakota. He was one of the most prominent abortionists in the country. This was, he just died a few years ago, Franklin. He was doing this all up into the 2000s. So fetal anomalies, like you mentioned, make up a small minority. 2013 Gutmeyer Institute study. Gutmeyer is an institute that is connected to Planned Parenthood. They found that most of these, based based on the research, that fetal anomalies make up a small minority of later abortions, and that it's very hard to even characterize those. Abby Johnson, former clinic director in the largest Planned Parenthood clinic in Texas, said, we referred hundreds of women to abort their babies after 24 weeks. Not one was for medical reasons. In 2003, a poll was done uh, in the nation, which is actually it was done by a pro-choice group. 71% of the women getting these didn't realize they were pregnant. 48% 48% had difficulty making arrangements for the baby, and 33% were afraid of telling their parents. Again, the Gutmeyer Institute found hundreds of women who had second trimester abortions. They, they surveyed hundreds of them. 68% had no pregnancy symptoms. 58% didn't confirm the pregnancy until the second trimester. 45% had trouble finding an abortion provider. 37% were unsure when they had their last menstrual period, and 30% had a hard time deciding on having an abortion. So You, you, you didn't answer my question, John. The pro-choice people said it was, it was virtually nil having it for health reasons and at fetal abnormal, abnormal, abnormalities. So 90%, this is actually a survey of 18 abortion clinics, not for post 20 week abortions, 90% were classified by the clinics as non medical. 90%. How many states have restricted that right completely except for medical reasons? Texas has tried to do 24 weeks okay. and it's in the courts right now. Europe is 13 weeks, Franklin. Across the board, actually, it's 12 weeks. One country is 13 in Europe. By the way, let's finish. National Institute of Health Study found that women who postponed their abortion into the second and third trimester were much more open to, now get this, PTSD. So the longer you postpone this, the more likely you are to have damaging traumatic effects. And as far as death, the risk of death increased by 38% for each additional week of gestation that you put it off. 
So the women that are having late-term abortions are opening themselves to huge increases in the chance of death. John, how many of those were elective procedures, which was the question? There were 8,300, as I said, Franklin, and they said they're less than 2% okay. are for medical reasons. Less than, so 98%, Frankly, okay. are so, for And so almost reasons. all of the abortions that we're talking about, because in most states, you can't do that except for medical reasons. So you're talking you're missing, about two percent of eight thousand. No ruling allows all of these other reasons I gave you to be listed as medical reasons. First of all, John, Frankly, you talked. No, let me finish. Again, you talked about you federal law. Your, your you talk about you federal law, and then let's talk about state laws. The states have gone in and put further regulations on these, so that the number of people we're talking about is very small. All right, so let's do that. Eight states and Washington, D.C. allow abortion until birth for any reason. Alaska, Colorado, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, Oregon, Vermont, and New York. The others have some restrictions, but, but not like you're talking about. The preborn child doesn't have any rights until he exits the woman's body. So... Most all states allow it, and here's the problem. Actually, even New York has medical restrictions on it. Frankly, it doesn't. I just yeah, read it. Yeah, it does, John. Frankly, it's the mental health of the mother, which is a, a get-out-of-jail-free card to do it. you got an abortionist admitting that he said the girl wanted to go to prom was enough of a medical reason. That's the point, Franklin. Europe restricts it to 13 weeks, Franklin. Actually, Europe does not. Some countries... Almost all the countries are restricted to 12 weeks. Denmark is 13. Almost all of those countries allow an unlimited right for the first time. Don't they, John? Don't they? Yes, I, okay. I'm not arguing for that. That's no, another, you another do straw man. Another straw man. We're did. not saying restricted in the, in the first trimester. Did. We're saying the second and certainly the third and trimester. So what we're showing is that very few of these actually happen in the third 8, trimester. 8,300. Okay. 8,300 a year. In, is that enough murders and, and, and the rate has been falling for 15 consecutive years. Then why don't we restrict it? What's the problem? It is restricted. restricted. That's why it's falling. Franklin? You could save your party if you would look at an My issue party's like doing this. Just no, fine, it's John. not, frankly. They've got more votes than the murder of children in four consecutive it's elections. That's because you've got 15,000 new uh, uh, Mexicans in uh, California voting right now. 15,000 new Mexicans. That's right. Actually, they found 56,000 in Texas. Mm -hmm. Just let, just Actually, let. they've already backed off of that and said they <laughs> couldn't actually prove any of that. Let me ask a question. <clears throat> If a, if, if, if a girl gets pregnant, why does there need to be an abortion? Why can't it be an adoption unless, unless well, it's for health reasons? Or well, well as, I've, as I've said, it, it's a lot easier to hold up a protest sign than to adopt an unwanted child. And hang on. Let me, let me suggest so, that, too, though. Franklin, which is safer for the mother if the pregnancy needs to be terminated, delivering the baby or aborting the baby? Well, that would vary wildly depending on what it the doesn't vary. It's always safer to deliver the baby. The simplest thing is to deliver the baby. It's always the simplest. Let's take so a call. if you don't want to deliver the baby, it's because you don't want that baby to exist. Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller. You're live. Hey, good morning, Steve. Good morning. Uh, that was out in the paper yesterday, and uh, people have been calling me. I want to make a clarification about that. All right, go ahead. People said that, people said that I quit the better cemetery. No, I'm not quit. Uh, I'm just been getting help from the parks and recreation, and I appreciate them helping me, but I'm still taking care of the better cemetery. Well, you're a good man. You sure are. We appreciate it. It's in the paper. It's in the paper. People thought I left, but I'm not left. Well, what, what do you mean it was in the paper? What did they say? Well, it was in the paper about parks and recreation. has been just coming up there and doing cleanup and stuff, and uh, I do appreciate them doing that for me, but I'm still taking care of the better cemetery. Well, we appreciate it. Absolutely. You've done a wonderful thing. Good man. Thank you. Anyway, my question is, why can't they just... By the way, let me clear. Child up for uh, All states, every state, allows abortion into the ninth month. Every single one. There are some restrictions in states, but every state allows that. Because that's the federal law. I don't know. I believe we can go crazy talking about this. It just seems like it's totally out of hand now from what it used to be. Well, it, it is. I mean, it's fallen to all-time lows. 
That's the truth. Because 8,300 deaths isn't really significant to Franklin or his party. Yeah, that's what I said, John. Well, it's 8,300. You wanted numbers. I gave you numbers. Is 8,300 a bad number? Is that a lot or, or a little? Anyway, let, let, me, let me say this real quick. By the way, let me, now let me say one other thing. His party, the former President Obama, gave the Presidential Medal of Freedom to the founder, Margaret Sanger, of Planned Parenthood, who was a raving eugenicist and racist. You can Google her and pull up actual film of her speeches to the Ku Klux Klan where she said that the black race was a mongrel race that should be plucked from the human garden. And President Obama, for purely political reasons, because they are so indebted to the abortion industry in this country, gave that woman, Franklin, do you think that woman deserved a Presidential Medal of Freedom from the first black president? A woman who was a eugenicist and a racist and spoke at the Ku Klux Klan? black president, but... Well, what do you think about Margaret Sanger? Founder of Planned Parenthood. I, I think, like lots of people from that era of, of, of our country's history, they have some so terrible, people, dirty laundry so that's not admirable at all. Racist and then they did a lot of good things to help with it. Lots of people at that time in America advocated for actually exterminating the black race. Is that what you're saying? Because that's what she advocated. I think their policies would have advocated for that. She didn't advocate. She openly, and by the way, Franklin... The reason she placed the Planned Parenthood clinics in minority neighborhoods is because she wanted to exterminate the black race. What percentage of Planned Parenthood clinics are in minority neighborhoods today? Don't know the answer. 80%. Well, 80% are in minority that's neighborhoods. primarily because they're providing low income. They have, a, they have killed 40-plus million black people. Now, let's move on a little bit. Uh, I just came back from vacation, and uh, I went down to a very expensive place in Florida uh, and I saw walls everywhere that was really some nice yeah, those that's some kind of that's new technology isn't it well they had these really nice mansions down there two and three four million dollar mansions whatever even some higher than that and they all had walls around them. Oh, well, and even even the interstate all the way down through Florida I noticed in Georgia, especially, they had these walls up along the interstate and all this kind of stuff. I wonder what those walls were for. I have no idea. They're immoral. I know that. Gee, I don't know. Maybe it was so they could they could direct the uh, the illegal immigrants to come in and clean their houses. By the way. Like they do at Mar-a-Lago. By the way, uh, his party has now <laughs> gone completely off the, off the cliff. They are actually advocating to tear down the existing walls. Beto O'Rourke and Kamala Harris both said we should tear down the existing I walls. I that I have to say something. This is going to be a hysterically funny election. I hope you enjoy every By the way, I, I'm going to enjoy every minute. By the way, Marco Rubio is on Finding Your Roots. And he is 4.6% Native American, which means he's 47 times more Native American than Elizabeth Warren. And he never used it to trade on his career. <laughs> Actually, what, and on that show, what he said was, you know, it gives us all a different impre impression about how important immigration is for America. It also That's shows how said. big of a liar uh, she was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you I know, hope you spend all of your time talking about... Uh, Native American DNA, John. Well, we won't. Because you guys couldn't possibly win it talking about issues. You mean like Jess, Jesse Smollett and your two... Uh, he ran for Kamala, president. Kamala, Kamala, Kamala Harris and Cory Booker are. Okay. And the, the day that came out, they said that it was a like a modern-day lynching and that this was what the world was like under Donald Trump. Sure. Now, when it turns out, it looks like he fabricated the entire thing. Both of them went... Well, first off, Kamala Harris pretended like she didn't even know what they were talking about. Both of them said, well, we think that the evidence is still coming out. We need to wait. Why didn't they wait when it was first uh, put forward? Franklin? Well, because like most people in America, John, when somebody makes a, a, a claim like that, it's so outrageous that we think they wouldn't make that up. No, he, and if he, we were wrong, then he that. should be punished for it. Actually, what I'm glad you haven't said that, because what he just, let he me translate. Punished. He should be prosecuted. Let me translate what, 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 what happened. What he said was, it fit the narrative that liberal progressives believe is true. Well, Therefore, mean, they believed it, right off the bat. Because it that, fits your that narrative. That could possibly happen. Like, it fits your can, narrative, for example, Franklin. even believe that a editor of a newspaper in the South could come out and say that we need the Ku Klux Klan to ride again. Franklin, it fits Like happened this week, right? What happened nobody could possibly boys? think what that was true. What happened with the Covington boys, Franklin? Was that true? 
And here's, the, here's the, this is really rich. Al Sharpton has now proclaimed that if Jesse Smollett fabricated this, he should be punished. Now, that's the Al Sharpton of the Tawana Brawley incident. Actually, multiple incidents where he made up, well, fabricated... Well, you disagree the, with Al Sharpton there? Well, I, yeah, like as long as, long as he's going to prison, too. Is he willing to go to prison? So if Al Sharpton says that somebody should be prosecuted for making up this story, you can't even bring yourself to agree with him on that. But my point is he ought to go to prison himself because he's done exactly the same. By the way, let's talk about Jesse for just a minute. When they first found these two guys and nobody knew who they were and Jesse Smollett didn't know that they were his accomplices, they asked him what should happen to them. He said they should be prosecuted, they should be sent to jail. Now think about that morally and ethically for a minute. He knew that if they actually caught two people and accused them, he knew that they were innocent because he fabricated the whole thing, but he would be willing to let them be charged and prosecuted. That is actually the worst moral and ethical part about him. He was willing to have two innocent people go to jail. Now, he later found out, oh, crap, they actually found the real guys. Let me ask a question, uh, Jesse Smollett. Is he still acting, or is, uh, is his show up? And he just well, the show defended him last week. They're a little bit silent this week. I mean, is he still acting on the show? Well, you know, they, they, they film these things months in advance. Right. So I'm, so I'm sure that he's still in some of those episodes. The showrunner last week was emphatic that this was all true. They supported him. They were behind him 100%. And by the way, I don't know if you've heard all of this, but now they suspect that the letter that he got, the threatening letter with the white powder in it, he did that too. These two guys had magazines in their apartment with the cutout letters. Here, here's what I can say about that. <laughs> and I hope... You all will agree with this, too. We've all uh, known people in our lives who we liked, trusted, and admired, and discovered at various times that they did things we didn't approve of. And we were surprised to learn that. And I don't know that we blame ourselves for trusting those people on the front end. Right. And if that proves to be the case for him... He should be prosecuted frankly, for Here's it. the bigger problem. The headlines and the trailers on CNN, NBC, CBS all said it happened. Mm -hmm. The celebrities said they called it a brutal attack with no alleged. None of these news organizations well, said alleged. Yeah, they all took it at face value. They didn't identify family. somebody and blame them for it, though. Yeah, Franklin, what happened to Small was a form of white terrorism. That's, that's on the Daily Beast. The New York Times, none of these people said alleged. None of them said alleged at all. As a, as a defense attorney, I would think you would think the word alleged was incredibly if important. If they were, had identified somebody and were accusing of them, I would agree with you completely. Alleged, huh? You say alleged when anything happens because you don't know. No, you don't say alleged when anything happens. I want to keep moving here a minute. Bernie Sanders, is he a Democrat or a socialist? He's a, uh, there's no difference. <laughs> okay. John. No, is he? he? He's saying he's a Democratic socialist. That's what he says. Well, I mean, what is what is your party referring to him as? I know what he refers to himself as. I don't know. The party doesn't refer to him as anything. The party is saying that he's a white male, and so he can't be the nominee. He's an old white. Well, they don't like old either. Well, you already <laughs> see you already see that uh, that uh, <laughs> President Trump his preferred candidate to run against is Bernie Sanders. He, one of them. he don't care. No, that's, that's his preferred. Well, look, AOC is ascendant in your party, and she's a Democratic Socialist. Trump said he, he thinks Bernie missed his time, but he'd welcome him into the race. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he thinks that would be the biggest contrast and the easiest one for him to paint. I, I, think, to Rob Brush. I think it's going to be a wonderful election this time, Brooke. I think we're going to come back and sneak in. I really have announced that the Democrats are going to help get Donald Trump. Because... The Dem Socialists... Well, that'll be what? Well, not because he's the Republicans last well, time. The Democrat Socialists, they're calling themselves Democrat Socialists. Are you a Democrat Socialist now, Franklin? Uh, I think every person in America is if they're honest about it. Is that a yes? uh, you didn't send your Social Security check back yet, have you? Is that a yes? Did you? Is that a yes? Did you? Is that a yes? Every person in America is. Is that a yes? Sure. Every person in America is. John? Democrats in Did you send your Social Security the, check? Can I, can I say what I feel about Social Security? Do you think the Social Security system works well? Oh, I think it's worked remarkably well. 2% Do you think the post office works well? I think it's worked remarkably well. So is Social Security going broke? 
Sure. If we don't well, if you run a business, Franklin, and it's going broke, do you consider that a success? Uh, most people don't. Most people most understand don't. that you have to make adjustments from time to time in order to make things Why work. Why don't we run it as a private business and see what happens? What, the post office? No. Social Security. Well, yeah, the post office. Because it is a yeah, private and, business. And, and the post office. It's not a private business. Well, why the hell he's suggesting it? Why don't we make it private? Well, that's essentially what's happening. No, it's not. How is it going private? Well, more and more of its market share is going to other things. You talking about the post office? UPS, FedEx, so forth. In other words, they're going broke. And listen to that. He is, going broke is his way of saying transitioning. He we're said not, we're transitioning. Not, we're not transitioning. 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 We
No Republican could be married to a Democrat. Running, what you're saying? running, no. as running for office and hey, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Clintons. Yeah, I'm not a Republican. Hey, why, why are they still against the Tell me. Why are you? you? Wait, wait a minute. Okay. Hey, all Republicans. Wait a minute. Right. Why, are they, why are they all against the process of an elected president? Why are all the Republicans, Republicans against him, then, why, John? Hey, good. why did they need an insurance policy, Franklin? Why all these Republicans are against him. Because of the swamp. There is a deep state. So, the deep state the swamp. so you're, you're looking at the wrong people then. You're worried about the Democrats. It's your own party that's screwed up. Uh, it's both of them, Frank. The, the whole government is screwed up. Okay. It is. The whole government is screwed up, right? The government they like the government you're just, like you're just money. proving They're your judge's point. Turn. The Republicans can't do anything right. Well, neither can, can the Democrats. They elect their own people. Well, let me tell you something. What are we going to do if, if let's let's say that uh, what's her name? What's the crazy girl's name? Let's say she wins the election. Where are we going, Franklin? Where are we going if she wins? Venezuela's toilet. Are we going to? Why don't we have a road trip? And let's go to Venezuela and show her. Let her see what's going on. She's actually defending Venezuela. Well, she says we shouldn't be giving me that look like he, we, uh, they, we should. The progressive wing of his party is saying we shouldn't be trying to interfere in Venezuela. Now, there, there's, I think, a hundred million percent inflation in Venezuela. People are starving to death, and the progressive wing of your party doesn't want us to do anything about it. She said, if you're going to be honest about it, be honest. is that there's all kinds of right-wing despots and dictators that arose in Central and South America that we propped up over the years, strong. and we created under a lot Ronald of these. Reagan, uh, under Ronald Reagan, only 30% of South America was in democracies. When he left eight years later, 90% of South America lived under But how did all those, all those dictators that you're talking about him helping replace get there, John? Through American intervention, and that's the point. Well, how far back do you want to, you know? Not the 60s. It's not no, that's, that's the problem, Franklin. I didn't have anything to do with that. Donald Trump didn't have anything to do with that. You people, you, you need, no, you you need victimhood. History. No, you need victimhood. Victim status. That's why Jesse Smollett, that's why you believe Jesse Smollett. Because you all thrive on victimization. You know, nobody comes in here on the radio more than you and complains about being victimized. I don't ever come in want, and to be I'll, victimized. I'll, I'll, You're the guy who says that capitalism is what's important and freedom's what's important, but you're the guy who always comes in here and claims to be victimized by everybody. You got the crushing weight of the government on you. You got the Democrats on you. Everybody's holding you down. Can I, can I you make, are the party of victims. Wait a minute. I want to make one last comment. I want to give you a homework assignment for next week. Just one quick, one simple question I want to talk about next week. What was the insurance policy? We'll see you next week. <laughs> You've been listening to Backfire with Steve Hickson, John Stanberry, and Franklin Chansey. Catch them again.